Hello everybody, welcome back to another War Thunder video, and today we're playing in one of my all-time favourite aircraft. It is, of course, the A-26 Invader. Now, this thing is glorious good fun, and you're going to be seeing a couple games uh, here in this video today. And uh, the reason you're going to be seeing more than one is, well, you're going to see. Let's just say I pull off the same blunder twice, um, which is quite unfortunate. But until those blunders happen... Uh, you're in for a treat because this is the A26B50 Invader. This is an awesome strike aircraft. Now, a little over a week ago, at least I think that's when it was, um, I posted a video about the PBJ Mitchell, which had 12 50 cows. And I was like, oh my god, it has 12 50 cows. What a gun bust that is. Well, this thing manages to one up it. In fact, it manages to two up it because it has 14. 50 cal, as you can see, 8 crammed into the nose there, and you have 3 on each wing. And of course you have 2 defensive turrets, and those defensive turrets are actually going to be very effective in this battle. And on top of that, you can carry up to 4,000 pounds of bombs, which definitely comes in handy, and you're going to be seeing that in this video. So this aircraft exact is pretty, I'm pretty sure it is, uh, my most played American aircraft in realistic battles. Which is not a lot, because um, I tend to jump all over the place. I tend to play all sorts of different things, which is why none of my vehicles have much more than 100 games played at best. But hold on, check this out. Oh yes, that's 12 ground targets wiped out in one go as we bombed that train there. Oh, it's so satisfying. You don't earn nearly as much points as you used to from doing that, but it's still satisfying nonetheless. So the A26, a little bit of history while we're just casually ground pounding here, which is what this thing does best. Um, the A26 was a late war American strike bomber. Now it performed this strike aircraft where it would be flying low and strafing things with 1450 cows. But it would also work as a light bomber, where it performed pretty well. I think it first saw service, uh, at least in combat, in 1944, uh, making its debut on on big world events such as D-Day. And it served admirably in the European and the Pacific theatres um, as a very potent, fast strike bomber, which was just very difficult for the enemy to take down. After the war, they served, uh, continued to serve in the United States Air Force and were the first aircraft to drop bombs on North Korea during the Korean War, where they would be based in places like Japan and eventually South Korea. This one here is a Korean War skin, where um, once again the A-26s were very, very effective, although uh, that was while they only had things like Yak-9s and LA-7s to worry about. Uh, when the MiG-15 started showing up, it suddenly changed and the majority of A-26s were painted black for night-only bombing raids to continue. And this one is actually partially like that. We have um, part of this plane, the wings and the nose are painted black, so this is probably from a night uh, camouflage, although usually the whole plane ended up being painted black. Anywho, as we're continuing to pick up a real score of uh, ground targets, 21 over there, it seems like the enemy team is finally catching on to our misdeeds. And we have an A7M Repu chasing after us. Fortunately for us, we had a Bearcat chasing after the Repu. Unfortunately for us, however, the Bearcat has given up and decided to go after someone else. Not sure why, because the Bearcat can catch a Repu. But it leaves us to fend for ourselves, which is not going to be so good. Can we get a fire? Oh, yep, that's juicy. That was two fires, actually. Looks like we set his wing tip, uh, his wing-mounted fuel tanks on fire there. Um, and now we should be able to dance away because this is not a slow twin-engined aircraft. In fact, it's relatively quick. And there he goes. Looks like they've been defeated. They actually managed to put out the fire. But another A7M has joined the fray. Thankfully, we have a Dornier 335 to help us out. But uh, it's a three-on-one. Well, technically two-on-one, because that A7M is looking real worse for wear. And I'm not feeling conf confident that a Dornier 335 can out-dogfight an A7M Repu, which is pretty 
darn good at doing so. As you see, uh, Dornier 335 has just been wrecked. However, we can at least lend a helping hand. So we're going to go head on. And this is not a plane you want to head on. Yep, there's that fire. And oh, we take some damage in return, but we are still alive. Thank goodness. And we're free to go about our daily duties. So we have one kill, one assist. Not sure how that's one kill, one assist. Because uh, I'm pretty sure we killed both of those repus. Apparently a Bearcat eventually decided to help us out and shot down one of the A7Ms. Unfortunately, it must have been one of the ones I damaged so heavily, so it might as well have been a kill steal. but oh well, who's judging? So now we are free to go back to ground pounding. We haven't taken too serious damage, but there's that blunder I mentioned. Looks like I got a bit too low and daring and unfortunately hit the ground. So yeah, bit of a disaster with regards to how that game ended up, especially as it was going so well. We effectively had two kills and um, we had quite a few ground targets. Still not a bad result overall. So how about the second game? Maybe this one will go a little bit better. Now, uh, once again, still in the same plane, this time on the Battle of the Bulge map. Uh, so this is in the Ardennes. And it's looking pretty snowy, pretty frosty. And it's an up tier this time, so we have some scary aircraft to worry about on the enemy team. Although, I have to put a little bit of an asterisk by that. So, scary aircraft, what sort of planes are we talking about? Well, I think this one, for example, if I can get a camera on it. Okay, location temporarily unknown. Not to worry, we will be seeing him later on in this game. Um, although, the, despite being the only jet aircraft in this particular match, the Heinkel 162 Salamander isn't actually that much of a threat because it's a very small, light aircraft. While it is a jet, it's a pretty slow one, at least relatively speaking. And it's only got two 20mm cannons. In other words, what I'm trying to build up to here is I at least stand a chance of tanking hits and dealing some in return. So you'll just have to wait and see if we can score ourselves a jet kill this game. There you go, got a bit more of a flash of that night camo. So we're going after the bases. This, is ten this tends to be what I'd use the £1,000 bombs on. Uh, unfortunately, as you're going to see, uh, 1,000 pounders, or at least four 1,000 pounders, is just not quite enough to take out a base at this battle rating, because obviously the bases have different health depending on what tier you're at. So, we'll just have to wait and see uh, as to how the results will be. There's that Heinkel 162 that I mentioned from before. Bomb bay doors are open. And away go the bombs. Although, I'm pretty sure there's only three. And there's the Salamander. They have shown up. And uh, time to embrace panic mode. Alright, we're going to save this last bomb. Can we drop it in time? Oh. Yep. And there you go. We picked up a bit more score. Oh no, there's a Hornies. Go head on. There we go. Like I said, obviously not really advised to go head on in a strike aircraft because you've got other priorities, but if you have 1450 cows, it's quite hard to resist. So, it's not going too badly so far. We've nearly killed a base, and oh, here comes the salamander. Yep, there you go. I suppose that's what happens when your plane is made out of wood and glue. Yeah, uh, not too durable. So we've actually managed to kill two aircraft properly this time, unlike the last game where we were robbed of the second kill. And uh, once again, we've still relatively undamaged. Nothing too important has been hit. So we can start farming these ground kills, and for some reason that pillbox is invisible. Fair enough. Oh, that's low. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you have to be careful when flying strike aircraft. Um, Sometimes, well, at least I can, I tend to get a bit too daring, and wow, that AA is strong. So we want to stay frosty, want to stay on our toes, and ooh, try not to hit those bombs. I'm pretty sure the AI aircraft in this map were also uh, invaders. And yes, we can start returning the pain on these uh, AAs. Oh, 
let's try not to make the same mistake twice. We've learned from last game. And yeah, the pillboxes just seem to be invisible on this map for some reason, but they were there, and this thing, 1450 cows, yeah, tends to destroy pillboxes pretty easily. At least light pillboxes, anyway. And you get a absolute butt-ton of ammo to work with. I think it's 4,800 rounds. I suppose there are a lot of guns to feed. And so you can do this for quite a while. I think the most kills I've ever got in a ground RB game in this aircraft is, I think it was must have been 30 something ground kills uh, it might have even been 40 and you could used to be able to rack some amazing scores up I think my highest was like 5,000 or 6,000 oh that's low don't want to hit a tree again I should probably not get too cocky and just return to base oh you gotta be careful with the hitboxes on these trees sometimes uh, well oh that's close <laughs> I already know what happens, and I'm still getting uh, still getting nervous watching this. Okay, I think we're good for now. Oh, that's very very close still. But we're doing all right. Aside from the aircraft that encountered us fairly early on, the enemy team has been pretty much annihilated, which is pretty impressive when you factor in that half of our team are bombers. And it's also pretty impressive that me, the strike aircraft, has taken down two of them, so good on us. Okay, things are going well so far. We're starting to run low on ammo, so we're going to have to think about returning to base fairly soon. Uh, we've actually got a pretty decent score, and I would this brings me back to you the a point about this being a very good plane. It... If you put a talisman on it, this thing can be great for grinding out ranks 4 and 5. This thing really is so much fun. At least I think it's rank 4 anyway. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Ooh, that's close. It was a bit too close. And yeah, well, I said I learned from the last game. Looks like I didn't. And well, yeah, we just about snipped the wing on the edge of that tree there. And well... It's a bit of a shame, really, because uh, who knows what kind of good game we could have had if we just kept on going on there. But until I made those two blunders, well, really the same blunder twice, um, you got to see how much arse this thing can kick. Because, like I said, 14 50 cows, which is insane. And these turrets, you actually got to see do something um, if you are careful. And, you know, you got speed, and you can fly a lot faster. You tend to struggle to slow down in this thing, to be honest. Uh, tricycle landing gear makes it easier to land, if that's really a problem that you're still having it ranked for. Um, rate of climb isn't terrible. It can be a bit of a lumbering bus at high speeds. Um, I have gone after bombers in this thing. It is very fun. It's just such a good aircraft, and I thoroughly recommend you play this thing. It really is the be-all, end-all Oh, it looks like it's not my most played plane anymore. I suppose this one like, gets a lot of love out of uh, ground RB. But in air RB, yeah, 712 ground targets destroyed. And 39 planes as well. So I think you can see what I use this thing for. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button. And of course, subscribe for more content. Check out the Patreon. Check out my recent videos. And of course, I will catch you in the next one.